Hello, I'm Captain Gamer, and um, it's kind of getting warmer here on the West Coast in, on this uh, January 21st, 2014 morning. And I'm not really sure if everyone can really appreciate the fact that I mentioned the weather. I mean, I wanted to do some sort of uh, setting establishment before I launch into my casts. Sort of give them the feel of some sort of chill, relaxing radio show, but if you have anything to say about that, then please leave a comment. I mean, I figure I should lead on something, although maybe I should only do it once a week or so, but anyway, I, and once again, uh, going on establishment setting, previously I always mentioned something I'm drinking and the fact that I just got done, in the case of previous ones, the Wii Fit, so... If you have any comments to say about all this setting, establishment, and these regular things that I scroll through before I start the cast, please say so, and I can adjust. Speaking of the Wii Fit, there are three games I've been playing a lot since the beginning of this year. One is Wii Fit, Wii Fit U to be precise. Two is Animal Crossing, just because I can't put it down. I got it for Christmas, so... My honeymoon with that game is nowhere near over yet, if any ending in sight, even a couple of months down the line, because, you know, that game goes all, all year. And lastly, a game I've been playing too much of is Neverwinter, a free-to-play MMO, going along with the lines of the uh, Dungeons & Dragons mythos and franchise. Really fun, really satisfying. I mean, I started off playing MMOs with a standard, I guess, Korean-inspired uh, World of Warcraft sort of thing, and it was stiff, but I liked it, and now we have Neverwinter, which is so dynamic, and skill-based, even. It took some getting used to, but I'm really liking it. Playing a rogue, you, you know I like rogue-type classes. The Trickster Rogue, which I've had to re-roll this class, I don't know, four or five times just because of one little thing I did wrong or or I specced out of place. And I'm going to be honest, I might re-roll again. And it's kind of killing me because I'm just so stressed out by trying to min-max everything I can. But anyways, that just went into a big reason why you shouldn't play MMOs. No. If you like MMOs, Neverwinter is great. But anyway, three minutes in and I haven't even gotten to the topic of today's cast, goodness me. Yes, I am going to continue talking about games, and not movies or things in general. Today, I'm finally going to be talking about something that caught my attention before, and that is probably the, uh, the title of this cast. Why Mario is Mental, and That's Okay. And if that title sounds familiar, that's actually... Ba I've actually got this idea based on a, a Game Theorist video simply titled, Why Mario is Mental. And I'll admit that I didn't know how to think about that video. Uh, if you don't know, the Game Theorists is a channel where people... Mm, it's, very, it's very diverse what they talk about. They're mostly talking about the game industry or video game lore and make coming up with all sorts of, you know, ideas, theories, and things like that. Hence the word, hence the name, the game, the name, game, theory. And, and they'll go over things such as why a certain YouTuber is really popular, um, certain trends of the game industry, and things lore-related, such as why Mario is... Yes, and when I say Mario, I do mean Super Mario, the possibly one of the biggest... the face of video games as we know him. Why Mario is... I don't know if they said he was a psychopath or simply a sociopath, but either way, they, they use all of his um, footage and all of these points to really prove that Mario is kind of a cruel person when you, uh, kind of a, a cruel person who has little regard for other people. And, 
When it comes to things like that, I am not the largest proponent, but I can still appreciate a well-worded argument, and I can appreciate if something is done for entertainment, and I will admit right off, that video was very entertaining because they did their research. It's just too bad that they used it towards that end. And once again, I'm not I'm not here to call anybody out, shame anybody, or you know, try to make counterpoints to defend Mario's honor. No 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 no. I they they had their own thing and they do their thing and it was great. I I had a smile and a laugh a few times and it didn't really change my outlook on anything. It's just I do prefer it when effort goes towards compassion as opposed to pointing out how things are messed up. So, the Game Theorists did their video. It was great. I was very entertained. And I do have counterpoints to that video, very legitimate counterpoints, but I'm not going to bring them up here. If you want me to mention them, then sure, I'll, I'll go along with that. But for right now, I'm going to completely turn this into left field and talk about... And I will concur that Mario is mental, or at least he comes off as mental, and it's okay that he is quote-unquote mental. So, and I won't counterpoint anything that the game theorists say, but I might refer to something that they say. I don't know right now, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I will say that sociopathic behavior is... It's it's a side effect of something a little less blamey, I guess you can say. Well, some, something that's less inherently negative. So, the, the point that I'm trying to get towards is the fact that um, Mario does have these, might have these tendencies to do things which can be considered mental or sociopathic, but those may be an extension of other issues that Mario may have or are very, very common in today's world, especially among people who are probably likely to be watching this video. Hopefully I don't, hopefully I didn't make you all feel like I'm calling you out, but I am going some, somewhere with this. Trust me. So let's, so I am going to, well, I guess I'm just going to say it right off. My belief is not that Mario is mental outright, but he is a classic introvert. That Mario is the sort of person who likes to communicate through his actions and his ideas, and make his mark by doing things, rather than by saying things. And the first piece of evidence speaks for itself. Even though Mario has one of the most recognizable voices in the video game industry, he is largely portrayed... Portrayed... <laughs> he is largely portrayed in his games as a mute, for all intents and purposes. You know, in all the Mario Galaxy games, in all the Mario RPG games, just... Everywhere you go where there are people talking to Mario, he doesn't say anything back. Of course, people will imply that they're having conversations with him, and he will communicate by nodding his head. But that, that just goes back to the fact that Mario's... all of Mario's communication methods are reactionary. He is not going out of his way to communicate with people. He will come up to a person, they'll say their piece, likely request something of him, and he'll agree to do that thing. And there and it, and that might attribute it. That might attribute to a passive personality, but the fact remains that Mario is still going out there and doing things and taking these requests and doing greatly philanthropic things. I mean, Tasks in the Mario games range from, you know, teaching bullies a lesson. Um, in Mario Sunshine, you would put out fires or clean up gunk. And just in general, 
when you have Mario games, especially in a game like Mario Sunshine, in fact, I just realized this right now, that Mario Sunshine probably is the most philanthropic, and when I say philanthropic, I gotta remember, I can't English major all over these things. Uh, what philanthropy is, like, the practice and thought process of being nice to people, of doing things for the greater good, making life better for other people, things like that. And I'll try not to say philanthropic from now on. Okay, where was I going with this? In Super Mario Sunshine, Mario is just taking these requests and helping people all over the place, going from one person in need to the next, and just taking on all these tasks, recognizing that that all the people of the island are in need, and he goes ahead and he does these things without question. Uh, of course, in fact, the one time that uh, in a Mario game that you actually can refuse to save the world, the game just says, okay, you refuse to save the world. Boom. Game over. <laughs> that is funny to me, because in most of these games, if someone says, Will you save the world? And you say no. The game will just keep on looping that question until you agree. But, in and this game I'm referring to is Super Paper Mario. You are told about the plight of the world. And for some reason, the game gives you the option to say yes or no. And it does cycle you through the yes or no. And the character pleads with Mario to say, Please, please say yes, please save the world. But eventually, you say no one too many times, and the game is over. You literally lose your progress. Um, the, um that you hadn't saved up to that point. It's... it's funny. It, you can consider it an alternate ending. And I guess you can, but I don't really consider it that. that that's just sort of... a funny thing. But that just goes back to the point that... In the story of Mario and his life and his adventures, doing the right thing and helping people out and being nice is the uh, is the way to go. You know, when I thought about this topic, I have everything off the top of my head. Really should have typed up some notes before going ahead of things. I'm actually looking right now at an old desk calendar of Mario, and I'm looking at him right now, so... That might be my little muse right there. Let's see, so... Mario... Mario takes tasks upon himself, and going back to the whole mute thing, you may think it's kind of strange for a person to never really properly communicate, at least in this day and age, because all the way back when, uh, video game characters were more often than not extensions of the player, so it was the player being the nice person, and in most cases, the player was just being the nice person for experience points, items, progression through the game. But, you know, the people in the game world, they don't know that. All they know is that this one person is being really nice, being really helpful, and using all of their incredible abilities to make the world a better place. So, if we if we can if we can let the game theorists run away with their line of reasoning, I can run away with mine. Being that Mario, he is just so willing to do the right thing, help people out that he's just unflinching about it. He'll just say, "This is another opportunity to help people," or he'll just say, "These people need my help. Off I go." And, let's see, so... I don't want to pop my main point yet, because I want to blow your minds with all the evidence. So, let us consider the end of most Mario games, or at least most flagship Mario games. Mario saves the princess. At least, when, when you conventionally think of the princess, you think of Princess Peach. And what happens? Princess is saved. Uh, Bowser, or the villain of the week, has been vanquished, or sent away. And what does Mario get for all of his trouble? He gets a kiss on the nose, or forehead, or cheek. And it's, it's kind of a... Oh, what can you call it? It's kind of an in-joke in the gaming community that Mario goes through all of this effort, and what does he get? One measly kiss. 
Of course, he gets the satisfaction of doing the right thing, and he's brought peace to the Mushroom Kingdom once more, but Mario really seems to relish in that kiss he gets from Princess, from the Princess Peach. And the more I think about this, the more it started to make sense, because, I mean, you see a simple kiss, but a kiss is a... It is a sign of affection. It is a, it is a token of recognition. So, when the princess kisses Mario, not only are we getting the sense that, yay, he did the right thing, here's a reward for being the hero, but also, I have recognized what you have done. And it is just one definitive way to show that uh, Mario might not be rich or become the next king or, you know, all the other sorts of rewards that people would prefer Mario get. But he went through all the effort and and it was just he he was recognized for it. He he was given a little token of appreciation. And when and whenever Mario gets that token of appreciation, he is just happy as can possibly be. Though you can't chalk that up to being related to the expected reactions of a character of particularly male heroes that when they receive a kiss, they get love struck for a few seconds just because that's the way cartoon characters act. But I don't know. I mean, whenever I do things, whenever I go above and beyond, or I do what's expected of me, or even when I do things like when I create videos, articles, casts, short stories, the real payoff for me is being recognized for it. That's why whenever people give me, you know, likes or favorites, that's fine. But if someone bothers to comment, on something I've made, it just makes my day. Because this person actually went ahead and used their individual words to tell me something about what it is I created or accomplish. And it makes me feel validated. Of course, that's not the only way I feel validated in my entire life, but any feeling of validation, no matter how how much I needed it, or where it came from, it just feels good. It feels really good, and I can imagine that that goes for a lot of other people. Getting feedback, and just generally having somebody recognize and adopt this thing that you made under their own understanding, and you can talk with them, it's just incredible. It is possibly one of the driving emotions of everything that I have done, creatively and otherwise. So, yeah. When, so, whereas I like communicating with people, Mario, under my logic, just likes going ahead, doing the right thing, putting through, forward all this effort, and all of the thank yous and promises of cake, and kisses on the nose. That is what Mario lives for. And let's go back to my main point. That is what Mario lives for, because he is an introvert. As in, he may have some kind of reservation or insecurity about himself. And there is absolutely nothing to signify this in the game, but... By proxy, we can see that he may have these feelings, judging by uh, his brother, Luigi. Luigi, he has no issues showing his shortcomings in terms of, you know, immediate confidence. You know, he's, he's sort of made a name for himself by being the cowardly sword, being skittish, afraid of his own shadow. I mean, at first, they played it up as a fear of ghosts in Luigi's Mansion, and then they just ran with it. And at first, I didn't like that because I loved Luigi. Louis I'm, I am a younger sibling, so of course, I, I, um, 
Uh, what is it? I associate with Luigi. I don't recognize Luigi. Uh, not sympathize. Oh my goodness. Someone in the comments, please tell me what, what, what word it is I'm thinking of that. But basically, I felt in sync with Luigi, because he was a younger brother. He was player two. But then, as time went on, this sort of precedence that Luigi is this timid person really grew on me, because it just meant all the more when Luigi stepped up and did something that was truly noteworthy. And... And that kind of, I don't want to say diminished, but that sort of made Mario a little more boring in, in my perspective. Not boring, flat boring, but more boring than Luigi. So I should phrase it as, that made Luigi more entertaining to me than Mario. That's how I'm going to put it. Because in general, I don't like to say something is worse, I like to say something comparable is better even though the implication is that the other thing is worse, but I prefer to, to focus on the better aspect. Alright, so I'm once again drawing this long line of logic. So, Luigi's timid, and... and, and sort of... I mean, he, he's a happy enough guy, but, he, but, but you can tell that he is not as secure in himself as he could be, just because of how he has these timid reactions and fight-or-flight reactions to to uh, intense situations. So what's to say Mario isn't the same, and he's just, he's just a little better at hiding it, or completely better at hiding it. Or, for all we know, the... just having these opportunities to prove himself and earn that recognition and this affirmation. Affirmation, that is what I was thinking about. Has seeing all these opportunities for affirmation just gives Mario such an intense focus that he he's too busy succeeding wildly to set aside any time or emotions for any sort of self-doubt. So Mario might agree might we might see Mario as agreeing too quickly and just throwing himself at all of these situations without a second thought when in fact he probably has had many thoughts but what he can benefit from this just outweighs the potential risk and just the way I've been phrasing this kind of makes it sound like Mario is like a glory hound or something and nope if Mario were a glory hound, he would be boastful, but he isn't. He's not boastful at all, except for maybe when when the situation calls for him to act like it for some endearing reason. <laughs> but in general, Mario just seems to be this humble guy who always does the right thing, very capable, very competent. And, in my humble opinion, it's because he is slightly insecure, kind of an introvert, and getting and receiving affirmation is just his way of going about things. So when people are kind of off-put by Mario's exterior, just the way he... He seems to be kind of a little out of touch with his surroundings. It's not it's not because he's any sort of psychopath or because he doesn't care about anything. It's because he kind of, he may have a dulled sense of reaction cuz as an introvert myself, I know all too well what it's like to have very strong feelings in a moment, but trying to get that through using your words and your, uh, and your actions instead of just telling people and just cluing in everybody on what you're all about. So, in a way, I can start to identify. Identify! I found it. I found the word. <laughs> 
So, I can identify with Mario, at least this vision of Mario that I have. I can identify with that, because he reserves his effort for his for taking action, being a person of action, and letting that speak for him, instead of just saying how he wants to be perceived. And, and just like, uh, and that's very similar to how I am. I don't tell people how I like to be perceived. I go ahead and I try creating things that accurately, that accurately get people to think that way. Mm. Kind of sounds manipulative when I when I say it like that, but I I assure you I am not trying to manipulate anybody. If anything, I am trying to build myself. I'm trying to build myself up to be the sort of person that I want to be, and hopefully, hopefully, people would agree with that image of myself that I see. So yeah, Mario may be a little off-putting at some times, but not because he, but not because it's any sort of negative thing, just consequences of being a little bit insecure. And I believe I already made that. I believe I already made that conclusion, concluding statement before, but I'm learning. I'm learning how to do this whole off-the-cuff cast type thing. Although, uh, I, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done talking about why Mario is mental and that's okay, but there is one thing, one thing from the Game Theorist video that I do want to correct, just because it's flat-out fact. In... As part of the video, they talk about how Mario was cruel to Yoshi, and they cited two things. One, Ma they said that Mario hits Yoshi in the back of the head to make him uh, lash out his tongue. And that is false. There is official art of Mario pointing towards what he wants, Mar what he wants Yoshi to lick up. That's what that's what Gibbs with the uh, hand forward motion. He's not hitting. He's pointing. And he's not making any contact with Yoshi. Second, second is the fact that you can hit the A button while while on Yoshi to dismount and get yourself an extra jump. Yeah, it's kind of ingrained itself in the video game, the uh, the culture of the video games to poke fun at that fact, but in the official Super Mario world, there is never a situation that completely makes it necessary for Mario to do the pit jump and dunk Yoshi into a pit in order to save his own life. Therefore, it just is not... I, I just can't consider it something which is... Um, which is net, which is necessarily part of the fabric of the game, or part of the fabric of the Mario franchise, because they've never forced you to do it. And you could go through the entire game without doing it once. You could go through your entire life never thinking that that was possible or that you could have done that without uh, without other people telling you that was possible. And if anything. That speaks to the fact that uh, the gamers may be mental, and not so much Mario, but I don't want to put that idea in anybody's heads. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much the only counterpoint that I wanted to make. I don't, I don't like being confrontational, I like saying what's good about things instead of slapping down what people, what bad people say about things. But anyways, I've had my piece to say, and one way or another, I threw everything at the wall, and I hope you came out with a better understanding, or at least thinking more the way that I do. So, Mario's mental, and that's okay, and that might indicate something about the human condition. So, next time on the cast, I'll talk about something else. I really should be planning these things out ahead so I can make uh, more graceful send-offs. So, next time I cast, you'll hear about a different topic of mine. Until then, game out.